Operational amplifiers are a lot like those gifts that are unexpectedly useful. Like those hand-stitched socks your grandma gave you last Christmas. They come in clutch when you're in need of some last-minute toilet paper. Even after wiping your troubles away, you'll still find more applications for what seem to be useless. So needless to say, this video is about the versatility of socks. Nah, I'm just kidding. It's about operational amplifiers. Although the previous analogy may have been enough information about the op amp to get you through the next exam, I'll share a more formal description of the device. The op amp is an integrated circuit that operates as a voltage amplifier. That's it. It amplifies voltage. This is where you say, so what? And that's when I say, you ignorant piece of sh- Actually, the word operational in operational amplifier implies that you can perform basic math operations by using voltage signals or inputs. However, the more modern applications of op amps include signal processing, making measurements, digital to analog conversions, PID controllers, and a whole sockful more of applications. How the op amp works is pretty simple. It just takes the difference between two inputs and amplifies that difference and sends it to the output. Now that's not necessarily all the gory details, but that leads to something pretty important when it comes to electric circuits, and that's the idea of abstraction. Although the actual internal workings of this device can be quite complicated, I just simply don't care. That's because I can model the op amp in terms of a few basic electronic building blocks, such as a dependent voltage source and a resistor, instead of the complicated architecture of transistors. So the op amp can be modeled as a large resistor and a dependent voltage source. The resistor just says no electrical current can go into the device, a fundamental property of the op amp. The voltage source is dependent on the difference of the voltage inputs. More directly stated is to say that the voltage source is proportional to the difference of the voltage inputs. And that proportionality constant is what is called your gain or in other words, the amplification. However, the op amp by itself is not useful, and that is because it provides a fairly large gain. It's somewhere around 10 to the 6 or 1 million. Even though that sounds like a good thing, it really isn't, because you practically have no control on the output, and the signal would become saturated based on its power supply. So if you thought this was some magical device that amplifies the signal without any cost of energy, then think again. So in essence, this is an unstable device. Also, its instability can be shown when the op amp is heated up. So this is the circuit, and I'm going to heat up this op amp with a hair blow dryer and see how the gain shows its instability. So this is what it shows after heating up the op amp. The horizontal axis is the voltage input, and the vertical axis is the voltage output. So you can see that it's hitting saturation here and here. The slope of this line will give you the gain or that coefficient. And we can see how it's unstable because there's this like hysteresis effect going on. It's not maintaining one line. So what if you want to amplify a signal by two instead of one million? Or what if you want to use the op amp in hot climates? You can't just limit yourself to using the op amp in the western hemisphere on the 40th parallel on Tuesday when it's about to be Wednesday. It seems like the op amp is just another piece of trash. Negative feedback is what makes the op amp useful. Now, negative feedback actually has more applications than just op amps or electric circuits. You can see it in biology through homeostasis, or you can see it in engineering through control systems. Negative feedback is a common mechanism for different areas of study. So what is negative feedback? Negative feedback simply means you're trying to make some process stable by reducing some rate or output that is unstable. There is also positive feedback, which is the complete opposite. It makes the process more unstable. A good example of this would be you driving your car. Your goal is to drive in a straight line, but the car itself drifts to the side as you drive. The negative feedback would be you steering your vehicle back onto the straight line. The positive feedback would be you steering in the direction your car is drifting and you hitting one of the rails. 
To achieve stability with the op amp, we have to accompany the op amp with other components such as resistors to create a negative feedback loop. Essentially, the negative feedback loop tries to keep the two input voltages the same whenever the output voltage increases or decreases. In my opinion, it's easier to see this when doing the math because when you include these external components, the gain of the op amp simply just goes away, getting rid of that instability. This then causes the gain to be strictly dependent on the external devices, such as the ratios between the input and feedback resistor values. Positive feedback is also useful even though it is unstable. This is because we can create marginally stable systems when we combine both positive and negative feedback. We can create things such as oscillators. These oscillators can be used to make sine waves, sawtooth waves, triangle waves, and so on. I'm going to show you a few applications of an op amp circuit. So this right here is our inverting amplifier. So what is being shown is this input, which is some sort of sinusoidal input, and it's being fed back by this negative feedback loop, which is this resistor. So I'm measuring the input and the output and see how it inverts the signal. If you're wondering what all this other mess is, it basically is a way for me to use a single supply when using the op amp because the op amp actually requires two supplies a positive and negative rail so all i have is one dc power supply so i have to split it up and mimic that positive and negative rail and if you're wondering what this other op amp is doing it basically is a voltage follower meaning it uses the high impedance or that very large resistive value so that it does not affect this voltage divider which are these two resistors right here so looking past all this jungle of wires, we'll see what this inverting op amp does. So looking at the oscilloscope, this is what happens. The top wave is our input and the bottom wave is our output. And you can see how this is inverted because you can see the tip of this si signal is the inverse of this one. And that goes along with the whole wave. And this may be useful for let's say an analog computer, meaning you can invert signals or multiply by negative one or any other kind of gain and perform some mathematical operation to solve, let's say, I don't know, a differential equation. In a later video, I'll probably go through building a analog computer using operational amplifiers. This op amp circuit is called the relaxation oscillator, in other words, the vibrator. It's also known as the multi-vibrator. So this is actually a marginally stable system using positive and negative feedback. And you can see how it's oscillating between two values, so to speak, by seeing this LED turn on and off. So you can kind of see the negative and positive feedback. There's going to be two resistors going to the negative feedback, and then a resistor and a capacitor going to your positive feedback. And how this light is oscillating is based on the capacitor. The capacitor is basically discharging and charging because the positive and negative inputs are changing because the output is also changing. So the positive and negative inputs are trying to equalize while the capacitor is charging and discharging. So if you look at the oscilloscope, this is what is happening. You can see that the capacitor is discharging here. A short time later, the capacitor is charging again. And then it simply just repeats the cycle, which lights up and, and turns off the LED. Okay, I realize this is probably a better demonstration of how this oscillation works. So you can see that the blue and green light are switching back and forth, and that's the charging of the capacitor and the discharging of the capacitor. The reason why you didn't see the other oscillation prior is because the diode only has one favorite direction in terms of electrical current. So I just put two diodes right next to each other and switched the polarity of one of them, and now you can see both of the oscillations. I know, you're shaking in your grandma's socks with all this information, so go ahead, tell your friends about op amps, show them this video, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time.